Um, and we'll go right into public comment. I have one card, Fred Gunther. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Gunther. How are okay. you, sir? Good, good. Um, okay, well, I guess I'm here because, from my understanding, the uh, you know this board two months ago uh, asked staff to move forward with a plan to balance the operations budget. Uh, you know, to date, uh, really nothing. Uh, I mean, I, as far as I know, it's not going to come before the board today. And I, I mean, it, it's. It sort of makes me wonder if there's a political will, you know, on behalf of the city to, to address this issue. I mean, um, you know, really the only reason we ha even have any money in the operating account is because the city hasn't sent us the bill, the $230,000 bill for insurance that, you know, could come, you know, any day. There's the $175,000 that was paid for rent. Um, and I understand the chairman has been working with the city to... Um, try to make sure that, uh, you know, whatever is collected from parking and that kind of thing will cover what is owed, um, you know, for this year. But that doesn't affect the budget, you know, that I had, had given you last time. Um, that, that budget assumed that those, you know, revenues from the parking and everything else would cover the 254 some odd thousand dollars that was the, you know, minimum that the um, city would collect. So if if that doesn't work out, you know, it's just going to get worse. Um, I mean, for example, you know, we basically, uh, you've got three streams of income from the stadium. One is the, the stadium lease, which has already been paid, the 175. The uh, variable attendance surcharge, which this year will be 125,000. And then the variable ticket surcharge, which you know is estimated to be 150, but either way that goes into the capital maintenance fund. So you basically, this year, you know, $300,000, and then all the other revenues from facilities rental, parking, that kind of thing will go to the city, uh, and just the insurance and utilities on the facility alone are expected to be you know over well over $400,000. So, I mean, and there's a whole slew of other things that need to be paid for, like elevator service, police, you know, those kind of things. So, um, I, I guess I would just ask that, um, that the, what I would like to do is, is meet, um, be authorized to meet with staff, get the latest um, uh, estimates on what the utilities are, what get the number, you know, from Studer that will help, uh, the latest numbers that will help us estimate the attendance and uh, the income from that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, move forward and uh, come up with a plan that would come before our operations and audit committee um, and then forwarded, be forwarded to the board uh, for their consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, we had a meeting probably two weeks ago with, I uh, say we, I had a meeting with um, some of the city and Dick Barker. Then I did, one, I did, we did, I did a follow-up with him last week, at the end of last week, uh, with his staff. Uh, Fred, you hit on some uh, key points that we're waiting on. One is the variable ticket charge, which I did call Bruce Baldwin from that meeting. You know, he gave me a number. He didn't want to be quoted. Nobody's here to quote him, I guess, so t about 200000 the utilities are, are tracking. I don't know where the four hundred thousand number you're using. We we had a, pardon. Two hundred was what I. That's what our original estimate was. Two hundred, yeah. on utilities. Yeah. You. I thought you just said four hundred. Four hundred with insurance. Uh, well, utilities are tracking. Um, we're we're pretty close on what we're getting on our on the on the lights as far as the stadium and um, we have the um, mounted lights metered separately, but they're tracking, you know, we had an annual cost of, you know, 150 for those, and they're tracking okay, a little above that now, but then we have an off-season. Isn't that right, Nicole? We had one month that she showed me that was a full month of games, so when, with non-games, we should be in better shape on that. And uh, But what I have asked Dick to do is, is sit down with, his people are sitting down with um, uh, Pensacola Baseball this week, if they haven't already, and getting some of those you know, a little better idea of what those numbers are. 
um, so I don't want to say it's premature. We're looking. I'm looking at a number of where we are from Dick, and you know they were they were booking some of our rent into 13, which you know they're looking at whether we can pull that back in 12, which pulls our uh, budget more in balance. Mr. Baker, I'm thinking maybe it'd be part of those same discussions you were having. But are they are they getting close to being able to? have figures so if somebody were interested in leasing the property or some property what their expenses would be common expenses and that and, kind of stuff and there's 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 i don't know if it's how public it is i know they're talking to every city council member i don't know if they've talked to you individually or somebody's looking at the, the the parcel outside of the stadium to the east and that's what we're going to right now with those cam fees that that property will also be going in towards Part of these utilities until people are built there we're, we're kind of stuck with that whole bill um so we are looking at that and we don't have a, a real number on that at this point either mr marty uh, i note the minutes from last week or last month rather uh, following item three on the second page mr gunner discussed the cmpa budget i request to have an operation and audit committee meeting before the next board meeting for the purpose of having a budget presented and to have a city representative report report on the actions passed at the last meeting. Mr. Reeves seconded the motion, discussion followed, motion passed unanimously. Uh, I, that didn't happen. This is the second month that our committee has not met. In spite of a unanimous recommendation or uh, motion passed by the board, and you know, if, if we've got a, Mr. Gunner's done an awful lot of work, come up with budget, we've got a committee and the chairman made a motion some time ago to sunset that committee. Well, you know, that was uh, chairman of the audit defeated. committee. The chairman of the audit right. committee. Right. That was defeated, uh, but we haven't had a meeting in two months. So, you know, I guess he's decided to sunset it independently. Well, well, why don't we, why don't we do this? Uh, and I did skip out of turn on approving those minutes. Uh, we'll call a meeting and who, who else is on that committee besides yourself? Mr. Baker? Attention. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll appoint a new chairman um, in the next couple of days, and, and have Ed contact them, and we'll call a meeting together. Oh, okay. As as far as I know, the uh, there's been no sunsetting of any uh, committees that I know of. Well, de facto. Fair enough. Uh, I hate doing that without Mr. Johnson here, but if he, well, I understand. He actually. He actually is not. He actually is not calling a meeting. So I, I'm. I'm. I'm fine that obviously he does not want to be chairman of that. We heard that, and I'll, I'll appoint a new chairman, and we'll get a meeting. Well, and I think I would ask, because I think that was incumbent in the past, you know, in the terms of the motion, to ask Mr. Spears to, you know, to have a representative of the city come and be prepared to discuss the mm -hmm. budget. I, I appreciate the chairman, you know, mm -hmm. doing our work for us, but I think there's some advantage if we're trustees with fiduciary duties to have the input of the committee, and there's, you know, there are, non-board members on that committee whose participation, not just Mr. Gunter, but Mr. Owen and Mr. Uh, Rushing and a number of others that I think we'd, uh, they wouldn't be on that uh, committee if their input wasn't expected to be valuable. And I think they need to have that opportunity to have that input and gain the knowledge. Um, I agree. I'll, I'll appoint a new chairman and we'll get a meeting called. Hopefully by the time that meeting occurs, we'll have some more information from the city, which is what I've been trying to get from them. And while we called Mr. Ball in the middle of that, they're you know, hesitant, but we're halfway through the season. So they, he gave me some preliminary numbers, uh, you know, which, which were very encouraging to me, actually, what those numbers were. Well, and that's good, but I think, again, you know, yeah. that was the, the action of the board. I don't think it should be ignored. Right. Um, well, we'll do that, and uh, someone can call a audit operations committee. Uh, with that, we no more speakers? No more, Mr. Chairman. The... And Mr. Gunther, I appreciate your diligence on that. Um, you have the minutes before you from our last meeting. Move their approval. Got a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion or corrections? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Great. Uh, we will jump right into action items. We've got uh, budget amendment 13. You addressing that? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Spears. Uh, budget amendment number 13 is uh, before you. Uh, this is the full construction budget, and this is 
some of those internal corrections we are making so that the budget we have coincides with the construction budget and you'll see it's a total sum change of zero dollars it's simply moving them within the internal line items where the uh, funds were actually spent uh, in the, the course of the construction and Nicole was here but she can answer in far more detail than I can ever provide just to confirm Mr. Barney. that there is no zero, no zero. impact it's just reallocation of the existing to the correct line item yes sir bottom line change is zero dollars move, move the approval, approval. Uh, motion from Dr. Jones, second, uh, John Marty. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next, request from Kingsway Church for surplus bleachers. Have we had that before us, or is it just our conversation? Uh, we received this a month or so ago. I distributed it to the board yesterday in their package, um, and Reverend Curry is here in the audience. He can uh, speak to his request. Uh, Reverend Curry. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, to the board, let me just say that uh, how much uh, we are enjoying, I think, as a community, your work that has gone into making the uh, Maritime Park what it is. And, and everywhere I go in our community, people are talking about it. They're loving going. And uh, I just wanted to say kind of uh, beside the bleachers, uh, thank you for your work to make this a possibility in our community. Good way to start. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, I pastor Kingsway Church. We own approximately 10 acres of land out on the north end of Blue Angel, right next to the village at Southern Oaks. Uh, we've owned the property for uh, approximately eight years. It's about 10 acres. Uh, has no building on it at this time. A church purchased the property with the intention of building uh, a facility on the property and uh, then as the years progressed and the economy did what it did then we discovered that we could buy existing property uh, cheaper than we could build new and uh, so we've got this property uh, there at the north end we've really been looking for a creative way to begin to develop this uh, open air space as uh, almost a community park type situation I made a request for the bleachers uh, because we want to add a sports field that would be uh, open and usable uh, in the community. Um, and then also we wanted to create kind of an, uh, an open air, uh, uh, smaller venue for some music. We're going to do, uh, we've done some like uh, little neighborhood uh, movie nights uh, out there inviting all of the community to come in, lawns, chairs, that kind of thing. And so we're just looking to create uh, a space for that. If we could acquire the bleachers, then we would use those uh, within that kind of uh, outdoor little, uh, not an amphitheater in that sense of the word, but a little open air uh, meeting out there where we do uh, community uh, concerts and events, neighborhood movie nights, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, so I uh, contacted Mr. Spears about putting a request in and uh, submit that to you uh, now. Thank you, Reverend. Um, those bleachers he's talking about are in storage right now with Al. Um, oh well, are in storage. I see Al's here. Al, you don't have anybody that needs those bleachers? Not at, at the moment, sir, but the one thing I might explain is those bleachers are basically aluminum seats. They're not riser sections. They're just the, it's a bracket that holds up the, the seat panel that supports the back panel. So. You know, you're not going out there and, and dragging a set of bleachers out. What you've got is seats and backs. Right. But you would have to have a framework to secure this too. And the way the bracketing system has been designed, it's designed to attach to a concrete riser. So you don't have anybody looking for those seats at this point. No, the uh, Mr. Spears told me that the salvage value on that is somewhere between two or three hundred dollars. Approximately, yes, sir. Board, Mr. Martin. Uh, your letter uh, mentioned uh, Bobby and Debbie O'Neill. I've known Bobby for many, many years, and I just called and talked to him about it. It's part of our due diligence, and he, uh, you know, he elaborated on what you just said. Uh, you know, with a salvage value of that, my only concern, and we're 
trustees with fiduciary duty to for this and you know we, uh, we're an arm of the city and you're in the county I don't have any problem with that but I, my only concern is do you think there's any need to um, you know indicate by advertising or anything else their availability before we take any um, step because you know it, it seems like uh, no matter what we do there are always some elements in the community that that find fault with it and I'd like to give everybody an opportunity and um, you know I'm supportive of it but I don't want to uh, what was the subject you or us to you know unfair or unnecessary criticism certainly what was the opportunity when we melted the last set down? <laughs> Who got a chance at those? I don't know that anybody did, you know, and maybe, maybe that's unfortunate, but. Um. The burner. Uh, Mr. McCormick. So the, the, the a team is not going to use these in the future because they don't want to use the, uh, the bench type. Right. Yes, there's no. They've been if we expand to do the next expansion, we won't need these type leaders. Is what I understand. I'm sorry. What's the last if part? If we expand seating for the stadium, they they will not use these type. Leaders. Correct. Okay. They're they're just sitting in storage. What what is the value of them? Did you say? If we, uh, salvage value is between two and three hundred dollars. Okay. Does this meet your need? Do you understand that? I, I don't really understand it either. But uh, are they just the beach the beach aluminum stuff, or do they have some? No, they they got to fit to something. You got to you got to you got to expend some money to do to do that. Exactly. Right. You understand? Yes, sir. How much do you normally charge an hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fifty dollars. <laughs> okay, well, you're using it up on it's three hundred dollars. Is that a, you making a motion? <laughs> I move that we uh, let somebody have the useful use at Kingsway Church of the surplus bleachers. Second. That we let who have use? Okay. Kingsway Church. Okay. Got a motion second. Further discussion? Yes. Ms. Carter. I don't have any problem giving it away either. I, I just, the next person that comes, we either, you know, just we give it away or it, something flies out of, you know, like the first set did. Or this one comes and someone wants, are we going to, every time someone comes to us and, it, and they get someone that told them that it was available, are we going to say, okay, I'm just asking. We're going to address it as it comes up. It's what we do. Okay. And, and if that's what the board yields, I'm fine. Ms. Brett. I was just going to say, I think there was a, um, a discussion about this back when we took them out, that let's offer them out. You know, if anybody has any interest, I don't know that we advertised it, but I think that was the intent when we took them out. Let's at least put them in storage before we throw them in the dump and see if anyone wants them. So, further discussion. All in favor, say aye. Aye. As opposed, motion carries. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Enjoy your Congratulations, I think. <laughs> Take them with you. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Garza, right there. He's got the key for you. Updates. Construction owner's representative and Mr. Baxley is right on time. We're making this a quick meeting. You have an update for us, sir? No report unless you got the question. No report yet. Yeah, thank you. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Mr. McCormick. Where do we stand on getting the permit for the breakwater? It's a great question. Mr. Baxley, you have an update on breakwater? I do not have an update. My, my understanding, Mr. McCormick, that, that there was this hang up legally, not our hang up. Right. But as you all recall, I've said that probably too many times to this board. That was resolved, that they could take this off the local desk, and th the last I talked to the local representative that it was yeah. in the works. So uh, it's anticipated that this year we may get the permit? Oh, we I think so. About 13 I think so. It's hard to predict the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, but right. it, we had all the other permits in, in hand, didn't we? Yes, sir. Correct. It's not, there's not, before you just couldn't put a time at all, but now that that's been... I don't see anything in front of us um, at this point. So well, I got one other question while we're talking yes, about sir. the water down there. The entrance, to, if you were coming from the waterway or the bay to get into the park, has all these pilings and things out there. Is there any plan by the city or, or us or anybody to move those pilings so vessels could actually come up to the park and tie up? The city, the city sends us notices. Um, 
as well as everybody else, I think that, hey, you've got this stuff in front of your park and boats are hitting it. And it's like we did, I'm not even sure who actually finally got somebody to go out there and put buoys on the rock pile over to the east. Al did, thank you very much, because boats were running up. There's a rock pile on the east side of the stadium in that slough. But um, as Mr. Murdy will tell you, that is not our responsibility. And uh, we're not. Belongs to the state. Yeah, you know, we're not going to get into the it's, it's submerged land lease, and we need to be careful on that. We did mark that pile, but pretty soon if we start marking the pilings and we miss a piling, they're going to say, well, you didn't mark this piling. And uh, I would like to see it removed as well, but at this point, there's not a. So it's movement. something that's up to the state to get the pilings removed? Is that what I'm hearing? I couldn't answer that. Okay. Well, it, 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 you know, the underwater land belongs to the the state administered by the internal trustees or the trustee of the internal trust fund or whatever, which is the cabinet, you know, and that to me sounds like um, a, a political move would be what it would take to yeah, and get it and done, and I think that's... The actual, the your good friend, the governor, one. might be a good but, one to approach, not, Mr. Chair. We're not asking to build another pier. We're just asking remove to the debris. It, move the debris so people could actually it's use, a, has it to navigation. use the waterway. And, and Mr. Garza can probably add more to this than I could, but my understanding is the city owns the bottom. The state owns the water. So <laughs> where where does the pi where is the piling? Is it in well, the bottom or is it in the well, water? And, uh, well, what, what and I then also we would have to have a permit to pull the creosote. Well, Holes out, which would release contamination into the water, because they've been un in the water for 100, 150 years, and so. Well, is that, Mr. Garza, is that actually platted city land? I know a lot of the waterfront is, but I, th I thought this on the outboard side of the uh, past the amphitheater uh, was not city property. John, I have to look at the map to make sure, but I believe. The maritime park is within the city's waterfront grant uh, the deal was that at one time the city owned that wharf and peninsula and after the wharf burned uh, the city elected not to rebuild it so it reverted back to the railroad and then the city you know, the railroad leased it to Tenneco and then they abandoned the site and then the railroad sold it to the city that's where the trillium tag came from but yeah uh, now is that in this what has been referred to as the slough or is this the area beyond well, there's, there's two areas of concern one is the uh, rock pile that's between Port Royal and the southeast corner uh, by the amphitheater that one's been marked uh, to the best of our knowledge it looks like a historical pile of ballast rock it's about 75 foot in diameter and uh, the water's about five and a half foot deep there uh, at low tide, uh, you can hit it. Uh, on the south face of the wharf, uh, there's old timber piling from the wharf. There's a box car down there. Uh, there's a number of things. And is that city as I well? I believe that is city uh, submerged uh, land. Now we have placed the Coast Guard on notice and requested a notice to mariners with regard to the obstructions uh, near the park. Well, it, it, you know, do you have any recommendations or any potential advice for solutions? Because I think it's, you know, it's if we get the permit for the breakwater, there's going to be a marina. It's for certainly foreseeable that, you know, that boats are going to even come in more number than they are now right. and if you, you know it, it's something that needs to be addressed and you know warning is nice until we fix it but I think we need to fix it at some point or it needs to get fixed whether we're the ones mm -hmm. that do it or not yeah for the proposed opening day ceremonies it was a quest for a large vessel to to moor on the south face and the only place that we could that we suggested be more was on the southwest corner and to be cautious of the the old wharf pilings and the boxcars. So, yeah, if you're looking long term, having large vessels on that south face, it's going to have to be cleaned up. What about just recreational vessels? Still, it's extremely uh, dangerous. I think you'd have a major issue bringing a small pleasure craft uh, up against that wharf. You know, there are uh, 
fen there are timber fenders there. There's no really good access to get from the lower level up to the. To and there are no breaks in the rail currently. Yeah, and there are no breaks in the rail, so. If, if I may, Mr. I mean, the reason I asked the question is I, I keep getting asked from, from people that I know that we've got a wonderful park and everybody likes coming to it by land, but it's a maritime park and you, you can't come up to it by boat. And Does anybody have any uh, idea or plan to, to make it so you can access it by, by boat? So that's yeah. why I brought it up. The, the plan was to develop the western wharf with the bulkhead and the marina. And that area has been dredged. It's ready to go. It, uh, it's my understanding it's a funding issue now. Permitting. Permitting. Well, got permitting on the got breakwater, the but it's, our, break it's a funding break. issue if we're going to clean to the south mm -hmm. of, <coughs> you know, and that's a decision for this. For the marina. Pardon? We don't, funding for the don't have funding for No, we don't have the funding. For, okay, I thought you, the yeah, break we, have, we have funding for the breakwater and the, and the marina will come at some point in the right. future. And then if this board or some others decide they want to fund pulling out pilings they can do that as well but at this point we don't have money and and that's where it stands if it well, and it's not our responsibility to do well, it we, that's what I was going to say I mean if the city owns it the city you know got the you know property they bought it as is where is presumably you know it's not this board's problem but you know it is a problem that needs to be addressed and it seems to me that that the city has liability uh, notice to mariners may help, but you know, I, I think it's something the city needs to be looking at. Yeah, John, when did that wharf burn in the 60s? 1972. 72? So it's been there 40 years. The rock pile, no telling how long it's been there. Right. And to date, it hasn't been an issue. And that rock pile, by my review, is on the Port Royal property and not on the Maritime Park parcel, just to our east. Yeah, but the Port Royal property is a city lease. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on rocks or pilings? If not, we'll move on to uh, design, design build team. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an email from Mike Horton. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. Uh, his report is as follows. They hope to have all the punch list work completed by the end of next week. Uh, most of the um, emergency cleanup and repair from the storm has been completed. Still working on a fix for the pool liner bubbles and have some site concrete to fix where there are some uh, crack and damage from vehicles driving on them. Uh, for Mrs. Carter's information, Pat Brown has been paid except for retainage, which they are currently billing. High Tech Plumbing has been paid for all the work he did as well. Uh, the affordable concrete morally issue is not resolved and probably will not be. They did receive their $35,000 payment. However, there is still a dispute over what they were verbally promised and what was produced in the contract and not and his quote is not real sure what to do about this one and that's their report Ms. Carter can I add into that um, and, and thank you to Hor for you know expediting those things there's one other thing I just want to add and the board can decide what they want to do about um, I don't know what to do about affordable concrete either I think it probably de deserves some more investigation some things I just think we don't know the other side of the story so that's up to the board about how you want to deal with that. It has never come to the EBO um, committee at all, Chair. Uh, they just went directly to the board. So we weren't able to vet it and help them and support them, which I believe we would have. Well, I, I guess my question is if it hasn't come to your committee and we left it with them, they're going to try to work this out. Um, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to assume unless they come back before us that it's being worked out. I would think, unless somebody's got something else to add to that. And then the, the one other situation that has surfaced regarding two um, minority vendor subs is, I guess, the last job that Pat Brown did with uh, Greg Green and uh, Davis Marine, Alex. Um, they will not get their retainage, according to Alex, because he is not invoiced for. And it's going to be, if it's not invoiced, then there, we know that it's 60 days, and if it's never been invoiced, it could be 90 days or more. And so the problem uh, is that he's being told not to submit the invoice until he gets approval. And so I just want, I, I explained to him that while he asked me not to bring it in front of the board on his behalf, because he has a good relationship with Horton, he wants to maintain that. I said, the fact that you, you told me I have a responsibility to the board to let them know 
if subs are not being paid, we need to know what's the problem. And so if Davis Marine doesn't get paid, then uh, P. Brown Builders and Greg Green can't be paid because they are the, sub, the second sub tiers. And he said he hasn't even submitted an invoice because he was told not to. So we're looking at somewhere between 60, 90, and maybe 120 before that's even resolved on that particular issue. And I just want the board to know that that's, that's the situation there on that particular item, and that is something that's outstanding that needs to be resolved and paid. Why are they telling them not to submit the final? Um, Alex just didn't want, he didn't want to be pushy about it to whore. He went to follow the instructions, and that's what he told me. He's following the instructions. He was told not to submit the invoice. Well, we don't have uh, their representative to confirm or deny that, but we just check if there's a reason going on there to tell them not to submit finals. Uh, just from the email, uh, Pat Brown has been paid except for retainers that I'm billing for in May, which we received that, which is as of today, 10 days late on the monthly billing. Oh, we're not talking we have not about received the May bill yet. This is something totally different. This is on another project that they are doing, where Davis Marine is the sub whore, and then Pat and Greg are working on it. This is something different. I understand. That's what I was told. So that's what we want to find out. What is the situation there? Has it been billed? And if it's not been billed, why? Is there a reason why it hasn't been billed? And what is the tentative date that they can resolve that? Because that. That's dollars that those subs are saying they, they didn't receive. Well, other, other, other than if our person we've hired is telling people not to submit bills, I'd like to know that. Other than that, we can't. I don't want to get into that's a, that's their subs. But we'll, we'll see if there's a reason they're telling people not to submit bills. Dr. Bold. Just a point of information for me personally. When the storm comes like that and they do the repairs, does the insurance cover that? That is a... That is a very good question. I'll address it in a minute. If that, are, are you, Ms. Carter, are you through? Um, yeah, I'm done with that. Yes. Sir. All right. Uh, that, uh, and I'm going to get some of this in the grand opening committee, and we're still going to have a record meeting here. I feel it because we just used some of Ms. Carter's EBO time up. She can't re get reuse. But um, kidding. You can have as much time as you want. Uh, through our counselor and others that. They have agreed uh, they're doing the repair. You know, some of it, it, it was, you know, is some of it maintenance work. I mean, uh, punch list items, and then some of it was warranty work, and then some of it was, might have been our work. We don't know. They have agreed to do it all at this point, and we are um, under their builder's risk policy, and we are moving forward uh, with our insurance at this point. Um, we're fully insured, even though I think we'd kind of been fully insured on part of it before. They have agreed to do that and uh, have done it as far as I know. Is that correct? Corrections have been made. <clears throat> Is there a deductible? We, we wouldn't have met it. N not with us. We have we have lots of deductibles, uh, big and small. Flooding, we don't have one, actually, but we have, uh, you know, hurricane. I mean, it's a 250000 uh, deductible. Other areas are half a million. That's part of the thing I've been meeting with. Uh, when I was meeting with Mr. Barker, the insurance, uh, Tom, and I can't name his last name. Uh, Roy. More Royal. With risk management with the city. And, um, you know, the city's self-insured on some things. It gets complicated what we're doing there. But we are covered at this point, and uh, we're in good shape. Anything else on the uh, design build? Administration, Ed? Uh, Mr. Chairman, while I'm calling on Kim Carmody and Al Garza to come forward, just let you know we did have uh, substantial 100-year rains. Uh, on June the 9th, when we were scheduled to have our opening, um, special thanks to the city staff, uh, to Hork Construction, their representatives, and uh, the, some people on the grand opening team who were there, uh, who did a really fabulous job switching from uh, an event planning to an emergency management situation, and uh, primary responsibility is keeping the public safe. Uh, overall, the property performed admirably. There were a couple of minor areas that we are now aware of and working to resolve. But the, uh, no system is engineered and constructed to contain 13 inches of rain in less than 24-hour period, which is what we received. Uh, but contrary to published reports, the CMPA pond did not flood Main Street. Main Street overflowed into our pond, and we actually helped uh, relieve the flooding on Main Street as it was discharged into the bay. Uh, but uh, there were probably 
six to ten trees that were toppled, uh, a couple of areas of uh, erosion, primarily on the east side, which the grass hadn't been down more than five days anyway on that side. In some areas, it was put down the day before. Uh, so that the soil shifted somewhat. We had some uh, red soil that was washed out, but it ha has all been corrected, and uh, the park is looking uh, as good as new. And so with that, I'll have Kim come forward to talk about events and Al to talk about maintenance and operation. Hello, everyone. Thank you. I missed you guys on the ninth. <laughs> they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> well, I almost couldn't get out. <laughs> um, we have actually had two events. Can you all hear me without the mic? Yeah. Uh, we've actually had two events um, since our rain out of the, um, our grand opening. One was Juneteenth, which was on this Saturday. Uh, the numbers I got were about 500 people throughout the day. It was, it was a celebration of um, the emancipation of slavery in Texas, specifically. And then we also had a concert from the 151st Army Reserve Band that was here Monday night. Um, we had about 100. It was a really good concert. Um, our next two events that we have coming up are this Friday. We have a movie, a free movie, and that's Chipmunks, or I should call it, no, it's not Chipmunks, it's Chipwrecked. Um, and that starts at dusk, which is around 8-ish, and we'll go the length of the movie. And then Saturday, we have our first van series, which is Blast from the Past. Um, I did put some flyers up on the, the desk if you guys want to grab one on your way out. That will be featuring um, an 80s band. We'll have some inflatables for the kids, a car show, uh, that is specifically to the 80s, a couple of contests that are being run by Cat Country, and, um, and then of course some art vendors and food and alcohol. And so I invite all of you guys out to come out and have a fun day listening to music. It doesn't start until 4, um, but it does run until 8, 9 o'clock. And I invite all of you guys out. And that is just uh, this week alone. Um, and then next week, of course, we go into our baseball season, our baseball games, which will be parking. And then each month we will have a concert, uh, movies, and then any promoters or festivals that are contracted with us to use the amphitheater or the festival grounds. And that is, a, in a nutshell, what we're doing so far. Mr. Murdy. Uh, I've asked you before about the vendors. Can you give me a number? How many were lined up for the grand opening? Well, we didn't necessarily have them lined up. Okay. <laughs> Especially the day of. That we well, actually I understand, had, but, the, but I thought they had to... Go they did. Some we sort actually of had 45 you. vendors that were just art and craft vendors, okay. and then we had six food vendors that came out. Um, okay. We didn't want duplicate food services, but yeah. So those are the vendors that actually signed up for the event itself. Okay. And we will actually we are meeting. We are finishing up putting the final touches on our RSP for vending, and that should go out in the next couple of weeks. All right. And where is the city ordinance or whatever has been the Hang up. What's the status of that? Uh, what we have found out that if, if, once again, if it's a special event, we can do it. But um, w before David left, um, we got direction from uh, the fifth floor. I'm not sure who it was, um, but if it is, the director can actually say that we can do vending since it is considered a park, a city park. So that is how we're going. So we forward. don't need. We do not. Need an ordinance. Because what we're going to do with the RFP, just general information, we're actually going to do it at two parks: one at the CMPA park. Uh, we'll do vending, we're looking for vendors, and also at the Bayview Park, um, because I think those are the two largest areas, and that will give some of our local vendors um, an opportunity to uh, to sell their goods at both locations. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I was going to, Dr. Jones, do you, uh, when you said an RFP, are you going for one person to conduct vending on both places? That would be incorrect. Um, uh, we are actually looking for a total of 16 vendors. Um, now, if someone came in and they had 16 ready to roll, uh, that but right now we're looking for individual vendors. Okay, so each one of them would have to submit a, a plan. Correct. Okay. And, and it's a very simple plan because what we're requesting is not like a huge document. Um, it, it is a very simple plan. We're explaining what we want, which is exactly, we, we actually created a vendor manual a couple of months ago mm -hmm. on what we were looking for for vending. And then, of course, we hit the snag that we couldn't um, do vending in the park. Um, so we're actually using that exact same information and putting it in our IRFP, and then we'll also have a meeting prior t um, to um, the deadline to explain to any interested vendors what we're looking for, what's out there, and the opportunities. Will that be noticed? It we sure will. Could we make sure we get a You betcha. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, uh, do you have anything to do with the parking? Or I do. Okay, how's the parking on these 
weekend events is it charged not charged free um well on all all game day events we right. do charge uh, we charge for this, uh, the Juneteenth and the, um, and these are kind of testers and we're kind of learning as we go along. Mm -hmm. um, the Juneteenth we charge and then the Army Band we charge. It actually wasn't, it was cost prohibitive for us to do it. So any of the small events we will not be charging, like the movies, mm -hmm. it costs us more to staff it than what we're actually collecting. Mm -hmm. um, so we won't be charging for the movies, but we will charge for this Saturday concert um, and it's a 3 to $5 fee. It's, it's, it's not the $10 fee. And, and we'll see if we actually at least make money. We have to make money. Mm -hmm. We don't want to break even. So uh, we'll try it this Saturday. And if it's, once again, cost prohibitive, we'll, we won't charge parking. Three to five for parking, but mm -hmm. the event is free. The event is free. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Kim? Now, do you all want to know how much we've made so far this year? And yeah, huh? parking? It's parking. And I can actually give you a breakdown. Um, in rentals, we've made only $560. In parking, we've made $116,000, and in vending, we've made $900. So a grand total of about $118,000 and some change. Halfway through. Keep yep. going. Uh, then, halfway through the season, anyway. And would you let me tell you our expenses? Those are even better. We've only spent $31,000. $31, and that's for parking staffing primary? That's parking staffing primary, yep. Does that include principal and interest? <laughs> okay, you, I know. <laughs> Thank uh, you, yeah, Kim, so far, we're only halfway through, so we're doing pretty good. And I was going to, um, my comments, which hopefully be shortly here with the last one, the Great Open Committee, and I was going to recognize you, but I'll do, since you're sitting there, you did a great job. Everything lining up for the ninth. Everything was perfect until that morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> when I started my phone calls to the people that were in the, on the ground wet and they, you'd had staff there since four and five that morning and as you can appreciate going through this you know when this started and i think ed ed and i were traded multiple calls i had 57 calls between 6 a.m and and 10 <laughs> or 1105 when finally we decided the whole thing was off but that morning because you didn't know what the rain was coming you got to appreciate that well maybe it's going to stop and you know we made the call to the governor okay don't come and then you know but we're going to keep the bands we're paying for the bands, so you know we're going to keep them uh, we can't have the one at one now we know that so charlie daniels finally agreed to come back and that's what i was going to announce my committee uh for expenses which is you know 10 percent of what he would have or it's about 15 percent of his original fee and we're working that date out now <clears throat> probably not going to be a weekend um, unless we want to wait till um, till spring of 2013 so we'll probably get him during a weekday we, we got to get the grand opening committee back together a weekday and, and uh, maybe do a ribbon cutting at five or six and then have Charlie Daniels play after that and still try to have some activities out there it's going to be abbreviated form it's too bad uh, as Ed said it's the second highest rain total we've ever had in the city of the history and the city's history and that's happened to be our day and we had a backup contingency plan of moving it to the Hancock and still having people come and it was just as you can see it it was everybody on the ground and everybody made the right calls so it was just time to cancel as much as we could and, and save as much money as we can and we did and we'll we will do abbreviated grand opening um in the future we'll keep everybody posted but kim mm -hmm. uh thank you and your staff for everything you did i appreciate thank it you. al garza afternoon again as you know, the city's got the maintenance uh, for the, the park, and as of the start of the baseball season, uh, we assume the, the power meters for the site and irrigation on a partial basis. Uh, we've been prorating those power bills between park maintenance and stadium operation. A certain percentage of the uh, water that's pumped to, goes to the stadium, and the majority of it goes to the park. The same thing with site lighting. For some reason or another, the jumbotron for the stadium ended up on the site lighting circuit. And I think that was just based on availability of energy. That the, uh, the stadium uh, circuit boards were full. The, the jumbotron had more of a electrical demand than was originally anticipated. So that's where it ended up. So currently we're prorating the power bills, uh, well, first of all, April we had partial, we took over partial. Uh, May was the first quasi-bill that we've gotten. 
Uh, so we're looking that June to July will be the first full month of everything running. Uh, let's see, uh, June the 1st, we took over grounds maintenance, litter removal on the site. Uh, we entered into a contract with Wallace Landscaping for an annual fee of $125,000. The city assumed litter removal on the site as of June the 1st. We're daily ins inspecting the site, checking the garbage cans. Weekly, we're sweeping the streets, sweeping the parking lots. We've had some miscellaneous expenses as a result of the storm event of June the 9th. Uh, there's about $5,000 in site restoration and about $3,000 in emergency pumping. That day, the contractor was trying to keep up with uh, a high water situation in the southwest corner of the stadium in it. And uh, along with a, a water situation in the amphitheater, we didn't have adequate pumps, so we brought, in some, we brought in some pumping capacity. And for the next 48 hours, we made sure uh, there wouldn't be a flooding problem. We brought on a third meter as of let's see the fourth of this month with the amphitheater. So that's currently where we stand with regard to maintenance. Oh, uh, one other point, a couple other points. Uh, the, the April rains did define a weak point in the drainage system of the stadium. Uh, the area we were pumping, the southwest corner, uh, the field maintenance area, and the electrical control panel for the site uh, were very vulnerable. So I, I'm told that there is a design fix in the mill uh, to address that. And a uh, secondary issue of the high rains is that East UA had some problems. And that was just, that was not all rainwater on the street. So currently we're dealing with East UA on mitigating the pond situation. We're trying to work up uh, an environmentally friendly bioremediation on what's in the pond right now. That's why the grass is so it green. It looks good, but don't go swimming. <laughs> I've got three people to hand up. I'm going to start with Councilman Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just, uh, you guys are picking up the, the trash in the trash bins there, and I, I know Correct. we have the recycling and trash, and that's going okay, keeping those separate. Because one thing I also noticed when I just walked through the site one time is that the trash barrels, while different colored, don't have different openings. And so I just was wondering, is there any way to monitor whether the recycling is actually recyclables or is there any fix if that's a problem? What we've done is supplement the receptacles that were provided to the site with the, with the black trash cans. Uh, Knowing that the opening day ceremony is going to be a big event, uh, we've placed additional barrels out there. I think we picked most of those up, but we have placed some additional barrels in the parking lot <coughs> area and at the plaza areas along Spring and Developers, Spring and Roos, because there's a lot of foot traffic in that area and people are just tending to drop their litter in that area. So we're trying to stay ahead of that. But I guess on the on the recycling bins that are mm -hmm. there. We do are, segregate the recycling. And are, are people actually recycling it? I mean, yes. You, okay. Yeah, we've, we've come across another issue this week, too, that Ed made us aware of. That there are no doggy pots on the site. Mm -hmm. So we'll be installing doggy pots this end of this week, first of next week. That's recyclable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste product. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Prince. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McCormick, I thought I had something. We'll go to Ms. Carter. Did you have a question? Yes. Mr. Corza. Um, you were talking about the maintenance, and yet the city does have that. Wallace uh, Landscaping, is that a sub of the city? Yes, ma'am. Um, how did you guys do that contract? Did you just... We went through a uh, SBE solicitation. <coughs> so we uh, advertised and bids were received. They were a little bit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. 
that's that's one of them. And um, I know that you probably know better than anyone about the rains. Oh yes, ma'am. I know you're like a pro. How could you just tell the board how prepared these overall? How do you think we did as a park, and what do you see if any? challenges for us moving forward because I was out there you know getting you know it, the winds were I mean they almost pushed me back mm -hmm. I mean I was out there in the height of I knew we were not going to have that and we were really concerned the people that were down on the ground that lightning was going to strike how do we do <coughs> so we'll know moving forward because this is what this, this is happening now in June you can imagine we need to get to the October right uh, that rainfall event was a very good test of of the facilities and I think 95% of the facilities exceeded expectations as far as operation you know a majority of the park did not have an issue with with the exception of some new landscaping getting blown over and some new side being undermined by uh, water uh, there was water ponding on the field and left and right field uh, right field uh, didn't have a way to get out, but within three hours after the rainfall event, the underdrain system uh, that's provided for that facility had it pulled out. Now in left field, uh, it managed to get under the fence, and that's where it caused it caused the erosion on the eastern berms. So, like I said, with with some minor exceptions, uh, the park did great as far as dealing with water. Now, again, the weak point, we found the weak point at the amphitheater with the, with the conduit, conduit leading from the stage to the uh, electrical control room. Right. Yeah, you don't want water going from <laughs> outside still, into the electrical control room. <laughs> I was screaming at Ed to clog it up with towels, find something. He goes, he goes sir, we can't do it. <laughs> you got sandbags. You had everything yeah. around. It was, it was 7 in the morning. It was easy for me to make that call. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Ms. Carter, you everything else? Uh, Mr. Marty. Go back, Mr. Carter. Ms. Carter's questions about uh, Wallace. My understanding, a number of the, um, like particularly the sprinkler systems and the plants and things like that, should be covered by warranty. And I want to make sure that there's no overlap that we're not going to end up paying Wallace for stuff that should be under warranty. Yeah. Uh, your contractor for the site work on the park was Executive Landscaping. And he is honoring his commitment. He's gone back and uh, reworked the, the planter beds, uh, straightened all the trees up, uh, made any adjustments to the irrigation system. The only, the only area that he took issue with is the erosion uh, on that eastern berm behind left field. So I'm compensating him for that. Now, there is another minor issue with the, the mulch that washed out of the planting beds you know, right there adjacent to Main Street. We'll, we're working that out. Okay. I had a much greater issue on Main Street itself. <laughs> All that mulch got, ended up down the drain or in your pond. Well, and the uh, the other concern, you said there was a design failure or, or problem that was being addressed. Is that being addressed, you know, again under warranty or, or punch list? Again, I don't. I can't answer that question. You know, we we defined the problem. We dealt with it. Uh, Ed's been working with Mr. Gonna, Baxley. Mr. Baxley's here, and he, he can address that. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, received uh, a proposed fix from uh, the contractor. Uh, we have suggested some modifications to that. We have received some pricing on it, and uh, we have some issues with uh, some of their pricing that we're working out right now. Uh, we think that... Uh, Probably some of the fix, the actual construction will probably be a first cost item, but a lot of the, uh, uh, we have an issue with any additional design fees or whatever being uh, charged to the board and uh, we're working those issues out right now. But uh, I think we've come up with a good fix and uh, all it will cost us is what it would have cost to start with uh, had we had those uh, facilities in. So not real sure what that cost is gonna be yet. 
Charles, I, did I answer your question? Having seen that situation today, that day, and now having seen the proposed fix, do you think it will solve that problem long term? I, I think so. I've, I've got to go over it with Al, make sure he's comfortable with it from a maintenance standpoint. But uh, I think what we're coming up with is uh, going to handle the uh, the water that that we saw coming in on uh, Saturday morning. Did I answer your question, Mr. Murray? Well. You know, you don't know the answer yet, and that's, you know, because we're broke, and I'm just concerned about the, you know, what it's going to Yeah, I can't tell you that. I can't. Go, and I know you don't have that answer yet, and that's yeah. all we just need to know. Uh, and whatever they come up with is probably going to be come out of the contractor's contingency, which we still have somewhere in the range, they had help me out here, somewhere in the range of 200000 or or more. Uh, still is, in that that and is correct out of the initial construction budget but we also now will have the opportunity to use uh, the, the capital maintenance fund which would be the ticket surcharges which those funds are just a few months away from being realized uh, by the board and I also was remiss in, in thanking the COR team for June 9th Charles was there as quickly as possible and Mike Moret as yeah. well uh, came out in the rain to help us uh, not only solve the problems but document what was going on that day but uh, mm -hmm. I, th I think we've got the fix uh, worked out, and uh, we should have an answer this week on, on the cost. And we appreciate it again, Charles. We know you're working on the house at this point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on your house. Uh, um, when, what I'm trying to say is he's not billing us, and we know that's extra, and we, and we appreciate you doing that. Again, thank you for your work. Um, anything else, Mr. Bernie? Thank you, Al. Ed, do you have everything else under administration? Yes, sir. The Design Development Committee. We've not met, uh, and it really brings up the question of should we continue or sunset, and we're looking for challenges. For example, we did meet when Bruce Baldwin talked about the signage, the new scoreboard, and then he made a presentation there, but he had to make the same presentation here, which is a little bit, du which was duplication, of course. So I personally am looking for guidance as to what we might be doing. Uh, to stay active and uh, keep from being relieved of my chairmanship. Uh, so uh, I've got an opening on another board. What? <laughs> I've got an opening on another committee. So, so be careful any suggestion on your suggestion would be helpful. So some right. direction as to where we should be going. Mr. Baker. Wouldn't that be the committee that would receive uh, or at least review lease proposals and things of that nature that, that might come up or hope come up? <laughs> we, we, uh, yeah, it's a, you know the lease that's coming up. The one we're looking at that I told you about coming in front of the stadium. It's like you know under our financing agreement that that money goes to the city. So we while we get to approve, they approve. What we get to get in is our CAM fees, um, association fees that hopefully are going to help offset some of our cost. But m my suggestion, and it's up to the board too. I mean, it, it keep keep your committee in place. Um, you know, for a couple more months at least, and kind of the park's still not finished, and make sure nothing else pops up. Uh, Charles Baxley's probably going to have some stuff to bring back before you when they get this solution. So at this point, if you'll stay in charge, we'd appreciate it. Mr. Murdy? I was just going to say at some point, you know, hopefully there are going to be some development on there, and, and what what is designed and built certainly would be, I think, in the purview of of that committee now whether or not that you know the frequency of the meeting I think that's up to the chairman and whatever they have on but I think that with their expertise and background I think it's uh, and you've got non board members on your committee too I, I believe well you know that's on the private side and really we're I, my understanding is we're just doing the public side the private side is now owned by the city and I'm sure they will be honchoing that more than us but yeah. But if this time you'll just stand by as needed and we'll see where we go in the next couple of months. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anything else for the uh, design committee? Yeah. Well, I had Ms. Carter. Yeah. Well, my concern is um, 15, 20 years from now, there's going to be no one historical. If that committee is not in place, where this park goes, how it's built, it, it really is based on how we framework mm -hmm. this whole process. So the design bill is not just public dollars but it's actually designed to park where we go without you it can go anywhere with anyone so I'm very concerned about that in addition I would hope that we would have many many people who want to buy and build things <coughs> and that's got to be looked at in terms of the future absolutely of the design bill I mean it's just a critical 
committee, when you look long term, five to ten years, is my thinking. I'll well, get my cards out to develop potential developers. <laughs> <laughs> You've got 20 more years on that committee. We heard. We we've got. Uh, actually, I think we now that I think about the sunset motion. We said we'd put that off till September, as Mr. Reeves's suggestion. So we can revisit at that point. Anything else for Dr. Jones? Um, if not, EBO committee, Ms. Carter. If I, I tried to take all the um, reports that I've given you and things that I wanted to complete, because two months ago we said that we were going to wait until the 20th to get some reports so I can finish the, the um, covenant with the community report. And so now it's the 20th, like we said, and there were certain things that I needed. And that's what the top portion of this, and I would like the board to tell me how they would like me to move in direction. Uh, it's a consolidation of everything I need to finish the report, the covenant with the community report. And today, um, I think it was uh, Juanita that said that we were going to give um, DPA the opportunity to give us the report. He said he would have a report by the day, correct? Um, that, that's correct, um, Madam Chairwoman. And on Monday, I sent a reminder email to Mr. Hawthorne. He responded that he was still waiting on some information. I advised him he needed to either demand it or to note in his report that it was not provided timely, but the report was due today. He, he responded that he understood. So that was one of my concerns. We're waiting till June because now he's not here. And, you know, how, how are we going to enforce getting that information to us? The other thing is, is this contract open or closed? I noticed on the budget, and, and if this is the budget, his contract is not listed as closed. Um, if it's not closed, we need to decide how we're going to get all those things that we need from him. And that's a real concern, proprietary information from the EBO, the whole nine yards. Um, so I'm concerned about that report because that is a critical part of completing the, the report that we're going to put on the shelf somewhere and give to someone. So I'd like some direction on how do you want to get that from him now that he didn't come through on the well, I assume his contract is closed, is it not? Financially and time-wise, but he does owe us the, the final report. Right. So he's been paid every dollar. We've got no holdback. Should we send him a letter from the uh, board? I don't know how you're going to get it otherwise. All right. Probably won't get it then. Well, that's why. <laughs> that's why I didn't want to pay him all the Is that the wish of the board send him a... Uh, a demand, a demand letter. letter. Yeah. Yeah. And my suggestion would be for, you know, to recount the, you know, you know, the historical, you know, the contacts by Mr. Spears and, and the commitment that he made in that, in, in the body of that letter. All right, I'll send him a letter to, uh, with the demand letter. Mr. Reeves? Um, my question is this, is twofold. Number one, you know, maybe I missed it somewhere, but for the last two meetings, I've asked for an accumulation of the covenant, how much money we spent, including the well, money that was attributed to Mr. Davidson. I haven't seen that. If you've got it. Well, we have a punch list. If you look at uh, A through G, one of those things that we're supposed to be I just getting. want to know what we spent because the second question I have is why are we continuing to pay Lou Ray? We're not we're no longer paying him. Well we just paid him eighteen hundred and some odd dollars because I signed the check. That should have been his final It was over like six months Yeah he he bills us maybe once a quarter well, let me go back. Why are we still paying him? His services concluded at the end of uh, March, and he was at your April meeting to thank you all and let you know his services were concluded. So we were through with everybody else, but we still owed Mr. Ray money? Correct. From the past. As I remember how long we discussed $1,800. And how many hours and how long? And then we, as I remember the check, it was $1,895 to Mr. Ray. So you're saying that's from way back. Nicole. So it'll, it'll show up on that list of, of how we spent 
the money for the covenant with the community. On the EBO program, that's correct. Mr. Murdy. Is there any other source of the information that you need if Mr. Hawthorne does not respond? I hate to be have something of that importance and that magnitude just, you know, held up. I'm not saying don't send the letter, but I'm, I'm looking ahead. Is there any way, assuming that he, he doesn't respond, or if he doesn't respond fully, is there any way we can gather that information? You know, uh, the only thing I can say is that's why I didn't want to pay him two months back. And I think it's going to take the chair and Ed and his board saying that you promised you want to do it. We've given you those two months, but didn't we? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Spears, when you asked him about this as recent as today, is that what you said? Monday. Monday, he said, I know it, I'm going to do it? Yep. <laughs> you know, I don't know how we'd recreate it, Mr. Burning, to answer your question, if, if we can't get all his background information. But well, we, we could always <laughs> add Mr. Gerald's to the committee. Sir? Nothing. <laughs> we can always add, add him? He is we on could the always committee. add Mr. Gerald's to the committee. He is on the committee, on the EBO committee. He was uh, all right. Um, it, go ahead, Ms. Carter. Send letter. I'd say send a letter, and and it's worth a phone call. He gave his word. We all know he didn't. We're gonna we're, let's let's move past Mr. Hawthorne. We'll go send him a letter, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. So A through G are all the things that we need to make a decision on, and I need a answer to. And my target date to get you guys something is August to 2012. So I want to know in this report. Uh, do you guys want pictures of the committee or just a little headshot of all the people that was on the committees? We have room for that. It's easy to do. You just come to the next boardroom, take a picture, and we're done. So I need a yes or no. And that's who I have uh, next to each one is the decision maker. So that's the CMPA board. I just want, It's just an action that I need to take with the people who are working with me. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes or no? I need a yes or no. This is the final report. Remember, I, I was going to bring it in today. This is the final report. On the back, we have room. And I just want to know, why are you looking at me like that, Collier? Anybody's pleasure? I, I'd say no pictures. OK, anybody? Is no pictures? A motion. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I mean, it's just the committee. This is who was on the committee. I just want to make sure that, that when it's done, it's over, that everybody gets acknowledged. So is that the will of the board? No, Ms. Carter, I'm going to leave that. You're the chairman of that committee. You, that's up to you okay. how you want to turn that. All right, I'll do that. Okay. Final words from the chairman. You don't have to worry about that. I have someone. We'll do it over the phone, and then we'll send it to you for your approval. Is that okay with you? I'm not sure what your final words from you as chairman of EBO. No. I was just going to put a final words to you about the, um, this is the report, and if you wanted some, to say some 60 okay. words or whatever. Very good. Um, Proof and verification of events and dates. When I, I, I've been asking Ed to go through the verbiage that I sent. I'm a, you know, you're another one that I've been asked. Please, <laughs> we, we're not going to send you a letter. We just got to. Okay. Hawthorne Jr. Okay, so I need. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. I need to. You and my dotted eyes crossed T's. Don't let us put anything that's not correct, Ed, and not verifiable on events and dates, and then. Um, the finest pictures that's going to be chose, I guess you're going to leave that to the committee. If I like some of the newer ones, we've got a whole bunch of new ones that we can use. So that'll mm -hmm. be Ed. I, I, I did say or George, but since he's not there, I would make that a committee decision. Uh, the budget analysis, I already told um, Nicole, she's going to give you guys a breakdown of all the monies that I got, who, who, how much is spent, and what I have left in the EBO budget. Right, Nicole? And. Um, then we need to decide how we're going to get distribution, whether we're going to do it on PDF or whether we're going to send it out in postage, if we're going to only do 400 or 300. Uh, we're going to need some dollars, so I'm just giving you guys a heads up on that, and you can make a decision on that. And then the final thing that um, we need to tell the community is what's the total dollars spent with the minority community, uh, business community in the project if it was 58 million. So that's a Nicole thing, I think. Now, I want to be sure uh, this is what I'm, what I'm concerned about is the famous quarter of a million dollars. I'm not as interested in how much was spent or not spent 
with minority contractors. I think that's harder to do. You know, I, I just want to know that in kind or otherwise, we did what we said, what this board said we were going to do. That's all. He's referring to the original Scott Davidson. I commit 250 to this program, which 250 out of our money, out of our money. Well, no, that was out of his money. Well, I know it was out of his money, but what I'm saying is. It was, but it was his money that we're going to give him. But it wasn't a separate line. I mean, yes, yeah, it, it was out of his profits or whatever he was going to pay 250 Now, as we found out really quick, a lot of that was his time of in kind. Um, so I'm not sure if this board committed to that 250 to sp sp Well, I, I, I don't, you know, it's just a conversation piece that I'd love to know where we are on that. I mean, I understand uh, completely, and I think Nicole... I heard the Coles or Miss Carter say that Coles responsible for putting that together. How much has been spent, um, Mr. Baker? Well, I was. I'm not sure what. I think the aspects of that, the Scott Davidson promise, and all that, would be certainly nice not to have that included in the report and all. That. Just kind of a, yeah, I, really a downer. Yeah. yeah, we're keeping this up, and I think that I got confused. And I think the chair cleared me up. Okay. That's something aside from that. But I, but I do want to I do want to be sure that I'm not sure the minutes reflect it, but at the time we came to dismiss Mr. Davidson, we assumed that obligation. We set forth that that we would continue that through the EBO committee you know so that's why I'd like for it to be discharged fair enough we'll, we'll have those numbers what else you have Ms. Carter okay the second half has to do with the future of the EBO and some questions uh, I, I'd like to leave in place a framework for the operations moving forward as it relates to the uh, equal business opportunity and so these are some questions that either I can sit down and go over with our subcontractor, which is the city. How did they, you know, how are they going to measure what percentage of SPE that we have from month to month? And my suggestion is that we just put a line item in our monthly meeting and we just look at it and, and determine whether it's a percent to plan. And I think that's something that as a board we need to decide. That way we know ongoing, and we don't wait three months or six months. To, to see how well we're doing with our SBE goals. And we don't have that. We have to have a measurement tool. It's critical that we can't, have that. Can't your committee come up with their recommendations concerning these three it certainly items? certainly can. Because this is not, in my mind's eye, something that we said we're going to continue forever and ever. What? The COVID? What you set, oh, what you set forth in these three questions. Um, it's a part of the covenant is a part of the covenant forever and ever and ever. So if you're saying go back to the uh, EBO committee, vet this and decide as a committee and bring it forward, that's fine. That's why it's new business. I will do that. But yes, we did say that as a covenant, we would have something in place to monitor what percent the goal of inclusion for the minority community as a whole forever. It's not just for. OK, well, you you probably going to have to show that to me. OK. You know, not that you have to show it to me today, but uh, well, I mean, I just. And, and any of the older board meetings, especially the chair, they've been here. The covenant wasn't just for the building. It's a, and I, I, I agree. We, we do have to be a little careful that, you know, we talked about some of this when we did our contract with the city. We can't force them into, um, you know, participation. We encourage, as we said. Um, but, I, you know, I'm going to have to uh, agree with Mr. Reeves on that some of this, y'all just need to come, you know, and make some generalities of what you want EBO to look like going forward. And, and we do need to keep it going for the covenant. Mr. Murdy. You use the term SBE, small business enterprise. I, I remember Mr. Fleming telling us, you know, legally that you can't do quotas or, you know, whatever for, and advertise for minorities. And... Um, so, I, you know, SBE, I, th I don't think there's a problem with that, is there? No. Just but so it, we're clear, I went in front of the 
if you remember when we did the contract that went in front of the, the council, they already have an existing SBA goal. They agreed, and Asma was up here, that they would follow that for now until the um, MGT study is done. Mm -hmm. That would be their goal, and they made the goal 10%. So it is in there, it's written in the contract. When he came in front of us, I said, where is it in the, is in the contract? I think you asked me that you were sitting over here and I was sitting over there. And I said, where is that at? And Ed showed him, correct me if I'm wrong, Ed. So yes, they do have a minimum of an SPE goal of 10%. I want to know from month to month what that is. It's the, just a line item. You are correct, but the statement in the contract said the city will follow their purchasing guidelines as they are currently written and subject to change in the future based on the MGT study, but it was at a minimum of 10%. That is what and that's what it says right now. That was what we agreed to in the contract. Dr. Jones. Doesn't the city have in place uh, ability to measure that, or do they track minority employment, et cetera? Don't they, don't they do that? Um, they, they do track the uh, SBE program. So the numbers that we would like to have for Mr. Hawthorne would be more readily available going forward oh, yeah. from the city. Yes. Yeah. But I still had to bring it to you guys and make sure. that it's something that we wanted to track. That way we don't wait till the six months and we don't know what's going on. It's a simple inclusion of a, a line item. And uh, so I understand from you the second half, we'll take it back to the EBO. You just work. come forward how you want to, because we're not sunsetting your committee like you said, but we need to, you know, we've got a lot of it behind us now and what, what we're doing going forward, be I think it'd be appreciated. Anything else on EBO? Well, uh, in other words, you need to do your recommendation and d deal with staff. And what we're going to do now is we're starting to limit the amount of time each committee has at the board meeting. Did you um, hear about that? No, I did. <laughs> I do. No, I did not. But see, here's the thing: if I get the framework and everybody agrees, then you guys will go through it rather quickly. It just hasn't had one up to this point, and I really had to We're play. looking for your recommendation. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do it for Thank you. Thank you, no Ms. Problem. Carter. And for that meeting, I hope that Ed will try and bring the right staff people from the city, if we have a meeting like she's describing, uh, to help with us. We know you've taken on a difficult task, and we appreciate it. Let me, you know, um, there is a sunset for my life, too. <laughs> we understand. We, we've taken on a difficult task. And I do anything, I'll, I let's, anything else on EBO? Thank you, Ms. Carter. Um, last, I think I've already covered on the uh, opening committee, um, grand opening. We are researching dates. We're going to try, as I said, to, to um, do that on the same time we have Charlie Daniels. Otherwise, we will uh, bring him in some point and we'll do a grand opening. Uh, abbreviated, as I said, and uh, I want to thank Kim and her staff again for everything they did. You're not doing a Saturday grand opening. Not, not if we're going to have Charlie Daniels, uh, because that's as you I said. Do, you would do the opening and have Daniels separate. Well, we we might. Um, if we want Charlie Daniels on Saturday, it's going to be spring of 213, the first date, and we're not going to wait that long. But if we want to do it during the week and have Charlie Daniels, we can do that on certain dates or. Like I said, we can put him off to 213, and we can have the opening again on a Saturday. Sorry about his health. Well, that's, I said if we want to get him, we got to get him. Everybody says he's doing a better and better concert um, in his older age, so I don't know what that's all about. But I'm looking forward to having him and, and, and doing the best we can with what we got left. But we will have an opening, and stay tuned. Ms. Carter. Um, just would you give me a little bit of heads-up notice before the next, whenever you decide it, so I can assist? Um. Very good. Anything else to come for the board? Mr. Reeves. I move that we move these meetings on this particular Wednesday from 1 to 1.30 so the service staff at the area restaurants can finish so that instead of meeting at 1, we meet at 1.30. So the service staff can finish serving your lunch to you? Mine in particular. <laughs> no, the service is slow at certain restaurants. Well, you've got tab. You don't need lunch. <laughs> you're not going to insinuate you're eating at the fish house today, were you? I, I'm not going to mention where yeah, I was Yeah, you don't because it's not free food. It's the other restaurant that you eat at occasionally. Um, it's a public record. Uh, Mr. Spears reminds me we don't have a quorum, so we can't take that motion up at this point. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. Well, I, the next time Mr. Spears wants something, we'll remind him. <laughs> I'm just anything executing my role as parliamentarian. Anything else well, before the Nicole all, comes over here and prounces on me? I don't mind there not being a motion I, uh, or not being a quorum for the motion, but I'll ask the chairman to set the meeting at one thirty in the spirit of my the board. With the board, is that you know? Hopefully, our meetings are getting shorter and shorter. So one thirty could still be out. We start at one because at one time we're going to five or six. But um, would the board carry the way? I am adamantly ambivalent. <laughs> Anybody else? Everybody okay with 1.30? I will make that, without a board decision, I will make that on my own, that we will now meet at 1.30 for Mr. Reeves. Mr. Chairman, traditionally, uh, the board has taken July off because our meetings are usually around the Blue Angels weekend. Your next scheduled meeting is the Wednesday following that weekend, so I didn't know if you wanted to discuss that. Bring Anybody have a discussion on July's meeting? Bring me a check. Well, I, we will, if there's a, does not look like there's a lot of material coming up, we will cancel that um, meeting. We have done that in the past, back when they were on Fridays in the middle of Blue Angel. Um, I, I can still have a committee meeting, though, right? Absolutely, and I, and I hope you do, and we'll have an uh, audit and operations committee as well. Thank you. We're adjourned.